Welcome. This is Majesty Sussex Report, and I'm Antonio. A year ago, I embarked on this journey with the Majesty Sussex Report, driven by a simple yet powerful motivation to combat the hate, misinformation, and relentless attacks on Prince Harry and Meghan, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. This channel is more than just commentary. It's a revolution, a stand against the forces that want to silence their story and destroy what they represent. Their journey, like ours, is about unlocking possibilities, ushering in a new era of fairness, equity, and equality. When I first started, it wasn't just about reporting the news or defending two individuals. It was about the greater symbol that Harry and Meghan embody. They represent what is possible when you break away from the chains of power structure that have long oppressed, marginalized, and silenced voices. Their strength in standing up against an institution built on centuries of hierarchy and privilege inspired me to show up and do my part. And it's what continues to fuel me and to fuel this community. As a community, we are part of something bigger, a movement to rewrite the narrative. Harry and Meghan's story is not just their own. It reflects the battles we all face in seeking justice, dignity, and a place where everyone's voice matters. The forces against them, whether it's the UK media or other powers and powerful institutions, are, are a reflection of what happens when individuals dare to challenge the status quo. These forces want to destroy them because Harry and Meghan are a key. Let me repeat that. Harry and Meghan are a key to unlocking possibilities. A future where everyone can stand in their truth without fear of persecution. In the last year, we've become a family, showing up to combat hate with truth, love, resilience, and sometimes some well-deserved shade. It hasn't always been easy, trust me. And the battle continues. But our 2,378 strong community subscribers is proof that when people come together for a just cause, they can create ripple of change that can't be silenced. We stand on the cusp of a revolution, one where fairness prevails and equality isn't a distant dream, but a reality where we're helping to shape. I thank you. I thank you to each and every one of you for being part of this journey, for showing up, for standing with us, for believing in a better future. Together, we're not just celebrating this channel's milestone. We're celebrating the power of unity, the importance of truth, and the courage to stand up when it's needed the most. As we move forward, let's continue to be a force for change. I know. 
one video at a time, one truth at a time, one act of love at a time. Here is to many more years of revolution, of truth, and solidarity. Thank you. Thank you. I have no other words than thank you. The great Maya Angelou said, we say thank you because it's what we say to God. So I say thank you for making this journey possible. Let's keep moving forward together. Thank you. Prayer for Gratitude and Thanksgiving by Debbie McDaniel, read by Leah Martin. O oh, come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. Psalm 95, 1-3 we have so much to be grateful for in this life, each and every day. But reality is that sometimes, constant life demands, struggles, and worries give more room to defeat than to a heart of things. Or we forget in the midst of busyness and pressures just to pause and give thanks for all that God has done and continues to do in our lives. Sometimes it really is a sacrifice to offer praise and thanks. We may not feel like it. We're struggling, we're weary, or maybe we feel like he let us down. We think God seems distant, like he's far away or doesn't really care about what's troubling us. Painful life blows and losses might have recently sent us spiraling. But here's what can make a lasting difference. We have a choice every day to give him thanks. And with a heart of thanksgiving, we realize that no matter what we face, God doesn't just work to change our situations and help us through our problems. He does more. He changes our hearts. His power through hearts of gratitude and minds focused on him releases the grip that our struggles have over us. We're strengthened by his peace and refueled by his joy. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for your amazing power and work in our lives. Thank you for your goodness and for your blessings over us. Thank you that you are able to bring hope through even the toughest of times, strengthening us for your purposes. Thank you for your great love and care. Thank you for your mercy and grace. Thank you that you are always with us and will never leave us. Thank you for your incredible sacrifice so that we might have freedom and life. Forgive us for when we don't thank you enough, for who you are, for all that you do, for all that you've given. Help us to set our eyes and our hearts on you afresh. Renew our spirits Fill us with your peace and joy. We love you and we need you this day and every day. We give you praise and thanks for you alone are worthy. In Jesus' name, amen.
Okay, so what do you folks think about that theme song for the comment section? I absolutely love it. <laughs> I was like, I am like, that actually turned out pretty okay. I like it. So I hope you enjoy it. It's so dramatic. All right, so let's get to your comments. Thank you so much, each and every one of you, for um, sticking around and um, for taking the time to either put some emojis on, on the comment section or always um send in sending me great vibes and letting me know what your thoughts are so let's start out let's head there now and all right so we've got connie hello connie oh by the way connie thank you today um earlier in um sussex sunday church service um for i don't know mentioning me or or, or uh, mentioned the um, channel and um, also to Church Nelly. I don't expect any anything like that at all, and I, I absolutely appreciate it when other content. Um, why am I getting all choked up now? <laughs> Gosh, I've been extra sensitive about everything lately. I don't know what's wrong with me. Actually, I do know what's wrong with me. But um, anyways, um, thank you. It's it's much uh, much appreciated. Um, that stuff. I, 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 I don't take anything for granted. So when people um, are generous enough to even mention, you know, the channel, I am absolutely grateful. So thank you. I appreciate that. Um, so uh, Connie, Nelly, um, Prudence, uh, SC, all of you, uh, give me one second. What I'll do, what should I do? You know what? Maybe I will pick one or two so we don't eat up a lot of time and i'll just respond to one or two are you folks okay with that i hope you are um because i usually take forever in these comments and then it's like okay because i, I want to go through each one of them um uh, and and you know but for 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 timing and all of that is not a good way to, to um, do it so first of all i have to pick the our um members um is just part of their package um their comments get picked um first so connie um beautiful video thank you antonio um <laughs> you have made me laugh so much um royal dogs um antonio you have wonderfully narrated beautiful video thank you antonio miss your normal emotional music Connie, I was crying too much. <laughs> um, that was funny about Boris, um, the be not manly talk. Listen, I I don't know what got into me yesterday, and as I was I, I was recording it, I was I, was, I had my my script in, in front of me, and I was going to be all serious about the whole thing. And then I was like, ah, I'm I'm tired of being serious. I I want to just be ridiculous and funny, uh, at least what I think is funny. And I'm happy that some of you uh, received it pretty okay. I actually thought that the funniest part for me doing um, was the bit on Harry going over to see his father and his father, not like King Charles is like, oh, you're here. Why, why are you here? <laughs> um, or him knocking on the door, papa, papa. <laughs> I don't know what, what got, in, got into me, but I just saw it as this sort of parody sitcom kind of thing. Um, someone in the comment, no, I, I didn't, I, I will talk about it um, later, um, but was was offended that I said anything about Catherine and the cancer, um, but I'll deal with that um, later. So that's that. Um, let me just scroll down here quickly. Okay, next uh, will be uh, Ange An Angelia McFarlane. Um, or McFarlane, uh, Peggins and tampons who give the media uh, to harass Megan since they couldn't break Harry away from his marriage, but God will punish these rodents. Oh my gosh. Let me tell you. Yes. Yes. So this morning when I got up, I started to look at some of the publications or what was being um, in, in the newspapers and so on. And hold and behold, the Times on Sunday have this entire article talking about how 
you know, Megan staff uh, did this and they, they, they came to her defense, but they went and, and spoke to the people, the staff in the UK that made the complaint, supposedly, allegedly, and they paint a very different picture of the Duchess. These people, these people will not stop. And as I was, I, I was getting ready to sort of do this whole short kind of responding back to it, just saying like, here is the proof, like, like you, you freaking maggots, you morons. And then I stop myself because I get very agitated and it's not good for my mental health because I get, I get very like angry about, about it because the injustice is just, so I kind of just calm myself down and I say, okay, let's just, let's just feel this out for like an hour, see how you feel after and, and, you know, carry on. But then within, within that hour, I realized something. They know the way Harry feels. So any attack going to Harry is not going to do him anything. He's just, he's, he's done, right? So what I think they've calculated to do is to attack Megan even more. Because they know that's the only way they can get to him. Because he loves that woman. He loves his wife. And to see these relentless attacks on her over and over and over again, I am 100% sure it affects that man. And I think that's the way they want to get to him. And I expect these, these ridiculous things to increase because now the Sussexes are just, they are, they are on takeoff flight. They, they, they've already... They haven't even reached cruising altitude yet, okay? They just took off. And look at what's happening. So, fantastic. They've got what's coming to them by the grace of God. Um, okay, um, next we'll do Felix. Okay, Felix, uh, Felix says, it is time the British media realized the smear campaign has failed and the only consequence is ensuring the slow demise of the British royal family. Through in it, the British royal family have been given info from fake polls that hit the fact that Harry and Meghan are the most popular royals worldwide and even in Britain. So the British royal family made trips to US thinking that America Americans adore them, not knowing that polls before Harry married Meghan showed that many Americans did not know whether the monarch was a king or queen. Oh my gosh. And the only royal they knew was Princess Diana. That's true. Now it is Harry and Meghan that stole the limelight. I look at that's absolutely right. I think, you know what, Felix? Here, here is my theory a little bit. And I wanted to do a podcast on this actually, but I started to do the research and then I, I got so tired of, of, of it and I just kind of left it in idea and I, in the idea folder. But I'll, I'll verbalize what I think without having any back in um, or research on it. You know, when um, for some people you're born into um, a certain elitist status, um, aristocratic or whatever, now, the, the, the monarchy is at the very top of that, of that uh, pimerate, right? So what they know about the world and how the world functions is very different from what and how the world really functions. Because the information they receive is information that is guarded and kept a certain way. So there's filters to it. So let's say... Um, uh, they are doing really bad in the polling for X, Y, or Z, right? Then that, they, these, these, these results, it will go to one person. That person will look at it and say, I don't know if we should shoot him this poll, maybe we should do something else. And then it goes to the other senior person. The other senior person makes a decision, the other senior person makes another decision. And then the final person presents to them this rose perfumed um, report that is not reflective of the truth. 
Now, the difference, because one can easily say, well, how come Harry is the way he is? Harry is the way he is because they left him alone. They didn't care. He's despair. Just let him do whatever. Go get drunk, do whatever, right? We don't really care about you. The only time we care about you is when we need to cover up something for William, right? Now, William, they just cuddled him. They're protecting the heir. And I, I, I believe, and I've said this many times, the people with whom they have surrounded themselves, the people with whom they have surrounded themselves are doing them no good. And I don't even want to touch the people who surround in William because I think there's more there than just surrounding him, right? So whatever, I'm not going to touch it. All I'm going to say is, you know, I, 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 I have mixed emotions because I know the awful things that, that they're actually doing like we, we can see the things that they're, they're actually doing, right? But at the same time, it's almost like I don't think he has the mental capacity to completely be like Harry, who's very analytical, who's also very self-aware, who is able to be introspective about himself. Like, look what happened immediately when, when he... They, they, he was photographed with that awful uniform on, right? And he immediately apologized. He went and spoke to a rabbi. He, you know, he, he wanted to educate and understand. Also, when in the military, he called someone a name, right? That is used, but it's derogatory. And he didn't realize that it was because everyone around him kind of uses it. And once he found out that it is, he went, holy crap, right? And he went to atone, I would say, atone himself and started to learn more about it. And that's the key. That's the key. The key is wanting to learn, wanting to be better. But you see, William already thinks he's better, right? And same thing when Harry said, I, I, I never thought about a black girl uh, a, a girl of color, a minority going into a doll shop, right? Or a store. And all the dolls are white. There are no dolls that look like her. He goes, I would have never thought about that because that would never hit my, it wouldn't. But since being with Megan, it sort of made him go, oh, wow. And they... The people who are telling them that using this same playbook that they've been using forever is the right way to go. It's the right way to go for the UK. Because there are people who are royalists who are going to be royalists no matter what. And maybe, right, they're going to be able to still do what they do there, but Outside of the UK, everyone knows what's going on. I would say most people. Most people. You would have to be completely, you know what I mean? And at the same time, I say that with one breath, and at the other, I, I, I kind of think of the people who just hear the negative stuff and is not getting the positive information. So the work that all of us do, um, it's really important. All right. Um, to everyone else who commented, um, thank you so much for the wonderful um, hearts and 100%. And um, uh, Susie Q, thank you so much. I'm so happy you loved the um, video. Um, Janet and uh, Sharon Daniels, Mac Mac Sharon McDaniels, um, Elizabeth, all of you, all of you, all of you, all of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hugh, thank you so very much. Um, I appreciate that. Very, very, very much. Um, Hilda, everyone, everyone else, um, thank you. I appreciate it a gazillion, okay? I don't know why it always seems like comment section goes by so quickly. So, so, so quickly. Anyways, folks, I am not going to actually um, talk about the one comment 
Um, I'm going to talk about that probably in the next episode because uh, I want to give it the time. Um, I have some things prepared that I want to talk, say to that person who wrote that comment about um, Kate and um, her cancer diagnosis and um, referring to me as, as making fun of it. So I wanted, I wanted to give it the seriousness that it deserves and I certainly will talk about it in my next episode. Oh boy, a year folks, a year. Thank you so very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I, okay, I'm not gonna say anything because I'm gonna get emotional. I'm just gonna end it. I, I love, I appreciate each and every one of you for the things that you do and for the things you don't do. Because <laughs> sometimes you don't need to say something, I already know it. Um, but you always say what you need to say with kindness and you don't know how much i value that um, because i criticize myself enough i put myself down enough i i'm very um harsh sometimes with, with with myself and i think that's one of the reasons why i always say be kind to yourself because at the same time i'm trying to remind myself that i need to be kind to myself and thank you for coming along with me on this journey. It means a heck of a lot. The last little while has not been easy. And um, yeah, I'll talk about it in the next episode. And uh, thank you very much. I love you all. You're all strangers, but you're all family at the same time. Thank you. Merci. Gracias. Until we speak again, take care of yourselves and be kind. Bye for now. I have something to say. I agree. I disagree with. I agree to. We have opinions. We have comments. We have things to say. We've got comments.